Have you thought that it might be fun to go solo RV camping, but you've been reluctant because, well, you thought it might be kind of scary? I've been RV camping with my hubby Tom for four years now, but in the last few years, I've done a lot of solo RV camping, but it's different when I'm camping alone versus when I'm camping with my husband. I think differently and I do things a little different because there have been times when it has been a little scary, especially at nighttime. Remember when you were a little kid and you thought the boogeyman was in your bedroom some nights? <laughs> well, when I'm camping alone, there have been a couple of times when I heard the boogeyman outside my camper. Or at least I'm pretty sure that's what I'm hearing. Actually, I've had the time of my life when I've been solo RV camping. Not that I don't want to camp without my husband, but his work schedule just doesn't allow him to go camping as often as I want to go camping. So that's why I've been doing a lot of solo camping. And I've learned a few tricks along the way that have made me feel safer when I'm camping alone. And I want to share them with you because I want you too to feel comfortable and confident to go RV camping alone. The very first times that I went solo RV camping, I went to places that I had previously camped at. For me, it just felt safer to go solo camping at a place that I was familiar with and one that I knew I'd feel comfortable at. Because there have been places that I've camped at with my husband Tom that I'd never ever dare or feel comfortable camping alone at. Tom and I, we like to camp at more remote camping spots, but when I'm camping alone, I feel more comfortable when there are people around. This is somewhat hard for me to do in the winter because I do live in Minnesota and of course it gets really cold out here. So during the winter, I'm usually the only camper at the campground. And this is kind of fun, but it can get a little eerie camping in the woods alone at night when there's no one else around for miles and miles. Oh, and getting back to remote camping, sometimes when we're camping in these remote areas, there just isn't a good cell signal. And when I'm solo camping, I do feel better when I know that I can pick up the phone and make a call and talk to someone if I need to or want to, or if something happened that I needed to call for help. So another advantage at camping at a campground that you've previously camped at is that you're gonna know if you have cell coverage or not. And it's also a really good idea to arrive at your campsite or your camping spot as early in the day as possible. That way you're gonna have time to check out your surroundings and get a vibe for the other people that are camping there before it gets dark out. Because you always, always, always want to be aware of your surroundings. My awareness level is definitely heightened when I'm camping alone. I think that's just my natural instinct kicking in. But that doesn't mean that you or I need to be afraid of solo camping. We just need to be aware of what's going on around us. And we need to always, always, always trust our gut. If you don't feel safe or something just isn't sitting right with you, you need to leave. Because if something just doesn't feel right during the day, trust me that uneasy feeling is only gonna get worse at nighttime. It's kinda crazy how our minds get going when we feel uncomfortable. Hopefully it gives you some peace of mind knowing that I've never had to leave my camping spot. Also, after I unhitch my camper, I always make sure that I park my tow vehicle so the front of my tow vehicle is facing the road or facing the way that I would make an exit. So if I did have to leave it real fast for whatever reason, I could just jump in my vehicle and head on out without having to back up or think about anything else. If I had to, I'd just leave and I'd leave my camper there. And I'd drive to a place where I do feel safe and a place that I could call 911 in case I didn't have good cell reception where I was at. Knowing that I have an exit plan, if something just doesn't feel right, especially in the middle of the night, does give me some peace of mind. Also, I make sure that I've made a note to myself about the name of the campground, the campground address, and the campsite that I'm camping at. This way, if I do have to call for help, I've got this information handy. The next tip I have for you is to let somebody know when and where you're going to be camping and when you plan to return. And if your plans change or you're going to arrive later than you originally anticipated, let them know. It's really comforting knowing that somebody knows when and where you are 
and when you're supposed to be arriving back home. Probably the number one thing that has really made me feel safe when I've been solo RV camping is having my dog Princess along with me. Princess, of course, like any other dog, would bark if somebody was outside my camper at night or if I thought there was somebody outside my camper at night and she wasn't barking, then I knew that I was just either imagining things or just hearing things and I didn't need to worry. Now, Princey, she wasn't a big dog and I can't imagine that she'd ever hurt a fly, but having her with me did make me feel safer. Ugh, it's been real hard because Princey passed away a couple of weeks ago and I miss her terribly. So camping is gonna be really different for me this year. But one thing I did think about doing, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna do this or not, I thought it might be a good idea to put one of those dogs on board stickers on my camper. I think that if somebody was gonna try to mess with me or cause problems, they may think twice if they thought that there was a dog inside. Talking about stickers, another idea that I've had that I've not yet done is to get one of those stickers that say, smile, you're on camera. Obviously, the intention here is if somebody's got bad intentions or plans on doing something that's not good to you or your camper, they may think about it twice or they may decide not to do it if they think that they're being filmed. Before I get to my next tips that have really helped me with my biggest, scariest fears, I wanna know, have you ever solo camped? Do you plan on solo camping in the future or do you have any tips for me? Please let me know. Okay, something that I always do is I put two camping chairs out instead of one. I also bring along a pair of my husband's shoes or boots and I leave them outside right in front of the door. Doing these couple of things, whether they really help or not, they do make me feel safer. Because the scariest thing for me about solo RV camping is running into somebody or somebody being around that has bad intentions and sees me as an easy target because I'm a 60 year old female and I'm solo camping. So doing these couple of things may stop somebody from doing something that I don't want them to do. There is a couple of things that I always keep real close by my side, especially at nighttime. And one of them is a bright flashlight. I keep this handy so in case at nighttime, I do need or wanna poke my head outside to see if there's anything out there. I've got a bright enough light so I can see my outside surroundings. The other thing that I keep close by me, especially at night, is my tow vehicle's remote control. Because on the remote control is a panic button and I'm sure you probably have one on yours and if you've ever pressed it, it gives off a very loud noise. And this is great because if there is somebody outside and you want to scare them away, this is a great way to do it. Also, it's a great way to alert other people in the area if you do need help. I want to take you along on a solo RV camping trip that I did 300 miles away from home by watching this video right up here. It was quite the adventure and I can't wait to see you over in this video next. That's a wrap.